See what Kev's got. <laughs> <laughs> oh here, <yeah>. plenty. <laughs> Try the second bit out. I'm with the bull. He <laughs> throws me about the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, so I'm really happy today to have Kev Lane, one of the most well-known, well-respected prisoners, uh, very, very well-known as a fighter in the system, uh, served 20 years for a contract killing, which he's still fighting now to get justice for that he didn't commit, and he's now a successful businessman, entrepreneur. Uh, we've just had a little boxing match down the gym, haven't we? Yeah, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he done to me, the bad man. He's still in very good shape as well. He can still hold his hands up, which you'll see after this little interview. But Kev, thanks for coming down, yeah, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Popped in on the way back. Yeah, good to see you. I'm having a great time. It's been lovely coming up. Yeah, it's been good to see you. Good little move around. How's life in general with you at the minute? Very busy. Um, very busy with the filming and all sorts going on. My case is taking a turn, so I'm, I'm sourcing uh dealing with that at the moment uh very good thanks good good back uh, training yeah you, yeah very fit you're looking strong mate and you got me some good punches earlier long way long way to go he's playing with me for you lot bloody <laughs> playing with me <laughs> all right so uh so i'm a long way off from what i consider fit and i'm a long way off consider being able to stand there hit a pad so a pad man that's so i can't put cold my hands up no more when I get to that level, then I know I'm fit. Well, we're going to do it every week, aren't we? Every week. Every week, we're going to train together, do some sparring, get nice and fit, help each other out and get in shape. Um, now, talking topical events, Charlie Bronson denied his parole yesterday, and George Bambi, the fake son, has come out and admitted he's not the son, and they both planned it. Um, what do you think of all that? I haven't spoken to Charlie, OK? Um, I'm in touch with Charlie, of course. <sighs> well, if it's what he says that Charlie was engaged in that, then that's Charlie's decision for whatever reasons he did. He's trialed by media, he's using the media for the purposes of his incarceration. And I can understand that, and I support that. Okay, in the fact that what more can a man do to get attention to his situation when he locked him in the cell on a cage animal? So there is that aspect to it, and people should think about that. They won't like the context of how it was done or how people have been duped. Right. However, how else you bring recognition to your, your dire situation? I think that's the thing. They won't like how Bambi's manipulated it, and it's the sort of the lies and the manipulation. Some people will say, well, it had to do that to get that. I couldn't comment any further on that because it'd be showing me if I had to do what he mm. did but he's an investigative journalist who knows his game. Uh, what's gone on between Charlie and him is in between those two but the actual the, the context of what was done there I support that and it's brought recognition to Charlie's plight for millions of people. The parole system, the decision I'd like to see the report on that so he's been denied access to open conditions, but with that it will be a, a recommendation. So let's see what the recommendation is for a release, if it is programmes that they will want him to commit uh, to do. Uh, so further, but I ain't going to get into lambasting people over it. No. no, I did what I did for Charlie because I thought it was on support that he should be given, and thousands of other people, do not be fooled, there's thousands of people in the system going in on two years IPP and they're doing 16 and such years. Kids have been found guilty for the joint enterprise because someone stabbed someone who's had a knife, and because he's had a knife, these 16 or 18 year old kids got 20 years. The system's wrong, okay? And then they're coming out of the system and they are not ready, these kids, when they're getting chucked in the system. So it wasn't just about Charlie what I did. I was made to look very bad on that. On that. Oh, document. This is the documentary on Channel Four, uh, which you, you were taken out of context. Yeah, yeah. I understand how it was filmed and why, and that was it. That I'm a uh, convicted murderer in society that can be violent. Uh, what I was saying was the obvious editing and such, and uh, I accepted I was taking some right-handers in that, but it was for the right reasons, and I just let it run. Some of the questions I was asked was, and you're in society, and I went, yes. And I knew what I was saying when I said it, I'll take responsibility for that. I said that for Charlie, that people could say, well, you, I can be violent. If you come and attack me, I will be violent back to you. 
that there's millions of people in this country that would do the same and consider, well, he doesn't do what he's natural. But because I'm a convicted murderer, that's considered that I've lost control of my emotions and I should have allowed that to be attacked or stabbed or whatever that person wants to inflict on me in injury form. And, I, you know, it's very difficult and that's considered bad behaviour if I got in a fight or self-defence of another and I could be recalled. So that interview there with Charlie Bronson, that day I had some uh, homes delivered that I designed and had imported into this country. And when we unwrapped them, there'd been thousands of pounds worth, tens of thousands of pounds worth of damage. So I took that interview during that, and you can imagine how I was disappointed with after nearly a year's worth of work, working all through the summer on the site, my own site, and then flying back and forth to Turkey seven times, and so on and so forth. Then the interviewing, and this isn't me just trying to make good what took place, but this is fact. My friends were on site and some work when they were filmed during the, during the unwrapping of the house, so they knew what was taking place. And they was asked to be quite, kept quiet once, and they still carried on. So it was the work when I said, oh God, what's the matter of them? That was it, really. But that made so me... Okay, so you look like you're getting angry and going At out. the children? Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't know, and there's that. But, however, the, the, what people must focus on here now is not me and how bad I was made to look and that. It doesn't matter about that. What is matter is what we're doing about the people that are sitting in prison and they're not going anywhere. Yeah. You judge a country by how you treat their prisoners. I keep saying it. We're going to leave people there rotting, costing us thousands of pounds and, and damaging me, thousands of families. Can I just say, talking about that, I, I'm part of a campaign now, uh, Free Jason Moore. Jason Moore was convicted of a murder, which he didn't do nine, eight or nine years ago, I think, and uh, he's halfway through a sentence. So Free Jason Moore, I'll put some hashtags in and there'll be more to come from that. And um, Free Jason. So I'm sending in Jason my book, Fitted Up and Fighting Back. And the reason why I'm sending it, I do it so often to people in prison, is that because they are where I've been, this book will give them a lot of support and they will agree with the criminal justice system what I say, because they are living it. And this is a real true to earth book and it wouldn't be rated as it is on Amazon, nearly five stars. Yeah. But I'm going to send that to Jason and that man, get behind him. Look into the case and see if it interests you. All of you have got an interest in the criminal justice system have a look because the struggles that he has got to get recognition to his plight is unbelievable in today's society. Yeah. Bobby Cummings is behind it, Linda Calvey, I'm behind it now. I'm behind him. Kev's behind it now. They did it, they went to the High Court the other day, there was a bit of publicity, more to come. But yeah, I'll keep you up to date on that with some future videos. Um, going back to your uh, incarceration, Kev, you did 20 years, didn't you? 20 years to almost to the day. And yeah, you did every bit of it, didn't you? And yeah. you were fighting a lot in there, and a lot of people I know was, have said you were one of the most respected as a, as a fighter in there. And what would you think made you that calibre of fighter in there? Combination of physical and mental strength and speed? As a kid, you've got to have, if you've got it in you or not, to be able to have a fight. All right? And you have different abilities as natural to you. So I was naturally a good fighter as a kid. I went into the criminal justice system and they say psychologists said the most disruptive and uh, violent are miscarriages of justice because they just can't handle being banged up for what they are. So I had that. I had a bad temper as well. And then things played on me. I, I just didn't like living with people that um, I was going to consider I should live with. So that would play on me and that would get my temper going. So I had a lot of fights for what I considered was, well, we should all be saying this, but it wasn't as far as, I, I couldn't live with myself if, if something happened and I had to deal with that. Uh, so through that, I had some altercations in the prison system that were quite well known. Mm. Uh, and as a result of being fit and able to fight and game. And boxing. And boxing, yeah, but I believe if you have your natural skills, you do learn to throw a better punch with boxing yeah. and more power. It helps in the street fight. Fucking massively. It does, right? But you just can throw them punches at 100 miles an hour and don't stop throwing them mm. for a long period of time. Whoever's in front of you is in trouble. Because mm. especially if these punches bleed and powerful, they are proper in trouble. And you're, in the, if they're not over in the first punch because they've gone flying, with, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's not only that, you can avoid their shots. If they're throwing a shot at you, you can slip, slide, yeah. and that's it. So in the prison system, 
I had the training ability because people don't forget there's fucking hundreds of people, thousands of people in the prison system who you would not want to step in a cell with that would pull your head off, mm. right? But for in terms of how I'm conceived in prison, let's just narrow it down. If a person's had a lot of fights in the prison system with a lot of people that are well known and considered to be quite handy, they get considered a reputation. So I had that reputation, but always considered I wouldn't be looking for a fight, but I'd have it if it happened and if I didn't think something was right. And I did okay. And as a result of that, I gained the respect, but I gained the respect more from people because I was a nice person who just liked to laugh in a good crack. And I would, if someone was no good, I'd say, you're no good, don't talk to me. That's a good way to say that, because I'd rather have respect for being a nice person than being a fighter. I'd rather be known as being nice and... It's lovely to be known as nice, and people say, that man there, I've never met him, is not the man I thought he was. I thought he would be six foot four after what I've heard about him. But he's just a normal, right, good crack, good laugh. Not an ounce yeah. of violence coming out of him when you meet him. No. None of that at all with me, no, it me. Not 100%. You're no. like me. We're good as gold to everyone. Treat people how you want to be treated. And if someone does, I've got to think about manners and Sounds being like polite. Yeah. Yeah. So if someone's rude to me, then I probably will start to question what it's trigger with me. Yes, yeah, so it's trigger with me. Absolute Cause trigger. Because I, I treat people nicely and respectfully manners. And if that I don't get that back, it can tell. You want to ask why? <laughs> so the prison system has that where you've got, you do want to ask why, unfortunately. But <laughs> I wish more people were like that because it'd make people behave better around people. Yeah. And behave themselves in life more. The old school manners of being able to yeah. behave. But in terms of prison, prison has this thing where it's the strongest, the survival is the strongest. And so it's run the testosterone, who can do more than who can do what, who's the strongest and fits in the most violence. And it's about protection. And who's willing to, yeah. Willing to do. So if you get... You can't show any weakness, can you? No, but if people know that your weakness is if you're kind and you'll stand up for fucking people, if so it's not well, I think that's a strength. Yeah, but it gets you in, you're never going to get released. Ah, uh, yeah. If you keep getting nicked because then you're using violence as a means to an end. Yeah. And that's the burn. So, but you're in a jungle and the, the rules of protecting you in there don't work. Mm. They can't police that. So you have to police it yourself and take care of yourself. And they can't take part. And they can't be there if someone's coming at you with a knife 24-7. Yeah. Or whatever reason's going on. So out of curiosity, what was your... Say you had a... You would just go straight in the fists. Yeah, no problem. Speed. So I took you on the pads. I know how quick KV is. And you're now, what, 50, 55. 55. And we had a spa as well. And he's got quick hands and a good punch behind him. And you're a good six stone lighter than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I've I can got see why. You've wrist here as well. And you've got a bad knee. <laughs> Tall meniscus. So I can yeah. see why Kev had that reputation for being able to fight in jail. Yeah, I just want to ask you something. Yeah, no, no, I'll talk about the fighting just so you know. It isn't something I'm comfortable with. No. All right. And uh, I'm really not. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate that. I didn't think you'd answer it because I know you're not really, you don't really talk of yourself like that. You're humble and respectful, but the reason I've got to ask because my channel's a fighting channel and everyone's yeah. curious. Yeah. And especially as we've had a move around. I thought, the boxing was great because I would get into the ring as a kid and think, love it, I'll get in the ring and spar. Skill against this fellow here and cuddle after he's punched the life out yeah. of you or vice Camaraderie. Person. Real good, like camaraderie coming together. And that to me was brilliant. I didn't mind getting punched and that. He got nervous as fuck. He don't want to get in there and get hit. It's a natural. respect thing, isn't it? It's a huge respect to someone who's got the balls to get in the ring. Massive. And I wish that more kids would do yeah. that. See community are pushing for it massively with the girls and the boys. And it's brilliant. It gives such confidence and respect. Structure. Yeah. Discipline. 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 And yeah, it just... I think they used to teach it in the schools in the 50s and that, didn't they? Before then. And, yeah, they did. Um, yeah. Look at how different it was back then. But I just wanted to say that anyway, because thank you. I do want to say though, Go on. the state of me at the minute is because I do get up at silly o'clock in the morning and I've had my faithful assistant do some work on me and she's done this needling thing. It goes, zzz, 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 it hurts like fuck. And that's the result. But all this bagginess and that, apart from being tired, of course, is from her smashing the life out of all these needles. You women know how to get your <laughs> vengeance back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And him. He done this to me, really. <laughs> he didn't tell me before we sparred it, had all that. Um, cool. But that was a good move around, mate. I'm gonna put the move round on at the end, so you'll get a little bit of a, a glimpse of us. But yeah, so what you got planned now for moving on? I'm going to, which is really important to me, and the reason I say that is absolute truth. I'm not saying because I'm just doing it now, but because I've been doing this and speaking to uh, this particular uh, group of people, one particular in person, men's health. 
men mental health, should I say, and it's about it's too scared to jump, and it's a, a 5,000 strong following in Birmingham. So I'm going up there to do a podcast with them tomorrow. I'm going up today and I'll be doing it tomorrow. So that'll be coming. Is that out. about depression, anxieties and all sorts of... Yeah. No, well, the first one, they want to interview about why do men behave like chimpanzees when they're between 12 and 16. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> well, we're 98% uh, similar genes to chimps. I didn't mean like that. I mean, they're actually similar. They're all already bouncing in there. No, actually, I'm doing a podcast about depression and that. Serious note. Are you, um, are you, are you a part of the ambassador for the group? or? Oh, look, I've, they actually... They do talk about me as a lot and use me for getting through the 20 years in prison. Yeah. So I would like to possibly know that it could be something. Could yes. you be good? At, that's what I'm, I'm part of a group now called Shape, Shape MK, which is addiction, mental health, and they're going to have a course one. I'm the ambassador for that as well, so I think you'd be good at that. Well, they talk about me a lot and they use me, so I'll definitely welcome that. I, I, I haven't had any permission to so say I am, so I can't. No, no, yeah. But yeah, I think there's possibly this, so they'd love to have me. Can I just ask you, though, that is one of the questions I have got, is how you coped with 20 years of prison, the mental side of it, <clears throat> for a crime you didn't commit. That's, that's the bit that I don't think I could handle. Pat Purcell said to me, Kevin, you've got to build a life for yourself in here. He's a great mentor and, and, and love him to bits. Yeah. And he, he really does speak a lot of sense. And he said, you need to build a life for yourself in here. Because this is your life now. The criminal justice system works very slow. And I thought, you know what, he's right. So that's what I did. He said, you'll get very bitter, your personality, and you're happy go lucky. So just carry on as you are. So I did. You never lost your sense of humor or anything, did you? No, and I had a drink. At times when it was the most hardest for me, and I thought, fuck me, how much more of this shit have I got to take? What's going on in here? The people I'm living with, in terms of, I say that decently, but you're living amongst the most atrocious crimes and people who do things to each other whilst they're in there, sticking spoons up people's backsides to get a puff out of them, things like that, you know, it's fucking horrible. And that never would have happened when I first come away. But the culture's changed and the prisons have changed. And uh, So I went up through my system of getting drunk. I used to get drink and have proper parties. And on my, because I came out of the units and I drank in there and I had a lot of problems with the, the, the special, the staff in there, the dedicated search team, the riot squad and things like that. We had a working relationship where I used to get really legless. So did my other pals in there and all right. And then it's, I became, a, he's had a drink, he's gone to sleep. There's been no altercations. So when I came out of the units into the mainstream system and he said, Lane drinks, manage him. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to have big parties. And that was my release of, Dancing, big fish, small fish, square fish box, and whatever they say it is, all right? John Travolta moves and all that, <laughs> all laughing our tits off. And because I laughed at the tits off, I've been crying my laughter sometimes. It's some of the moves some of them lads do, right? And, that, and I, on the next morning, I got for what I say, scream. If I hadn't released that emotion, you'd be, yeah. How would I have come out the other end? Yeah. And then training hard, beat himself in the gym. I mean, good company. Yeah. And good training is a good part of it, releasing the good feel good chemicals. Massive. Can I ask who you got on well with in there? Well, can I just say, I want to tell my family in Scotland, my campaign, having people behind me in, all over the country, but having people like my family support me and run that campaign, knowing you've got support, you're not on your own. Is that right. your cousin? I think I saw Jacqueline, your cousin on yeah, that video. Yeah, my uncle, Andy, Sheila, Jacqueline, all my family up there, massive support. And having that now, you've got people fighting for you. It's like corner men. Yeah. And, and you couldn't have got where I got through. So I'd like to say that. And can I ask who you got on with in there and then you enjoyed them drinks with any names? Oh, from? Martin Valentine, Teddy Avis, uh, Ray Betson. I've got his permission to mention his name, but I'm sure Ray would be okay with that. Noel Cunningham, John oh, Toomey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, God, Dave uh, Gunn. Dave Gunn. Uh, I've never had a drink with Dave. Um, Hello Dave, by Peter the way. Hello Dave, proper <laughs> good laugh Dave. Uh, Peter O'Toole, I have had some real screams We're having some drinks with people and um, it's been all over the country. Mm. So, and you know what, when you're sitting down having a drink, it's like being in, you had to dress up to come and have a drink with me, make sure like I've had that, yeah, you, you, had to, you got all dressed up and like a... Yeah, put a bit of music yeah. on, have a crack and a laugh and a chat, it's always a good laugh. And the screws are always having a drink. Kevin, keep your music down, but fucking hell, sometimes. I had a 375 surround sounds panoramic surround system in my cell. <laughs> they can hear it in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so that, and uh, yeah, that, I've yeah. had some good drinks with some good people. Yeah, I've seen your prison hooch as well when we came to the party. Yeah, yeah. you gave it to, to someone, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they said it was strong. 
Very strong. My son. And yeah. Very strong. Bubble, yeah. I'm gonna do another batch soon. Yeah. And then uh, I can't wait. I take I end up going to stay in a hotel somewhere and I was, I was working away in Tunbridge Wells and one of my houses, we had a sports bar was launching in Tunbridge Royal Tunbridge Wells away. And I was working with some Turkish fellas down there from Turkey coming and install my product. And I was staying in the hotel and uh, I was down there for a few nights and I took bottles of hooch with me. <laughs> that is I was getting pissed on the hooch in the hotel room, yeah. right? And then going to graft in the morning. It's six o'clock. <laughs> it's strong stuff as well. Happy days with yeah. that little glass and that. And I go to bed and I'm rocking. Three glasses and I'm real yeah. merry. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming down, Kev. Stay tuned for the me and Kev having a little spa and a bit of pad work. And uh, we're going to do another future one again, aren't we, Kev? Yeah, we'll together again. Get here every week. I need to get sharp and uh, get my fitness back and really flowing and uh, on point. And uh, she got snappy and that. And uh, me and Matt and other people will know what I'm talking about. So that's where this journey will go from where we are now to what you see. We're like a couple of old drunks in a bar in a minute, right? <laughs> but we're going to become like a real tight pro lads yeah. in, the, in the gym. We will, it won't take long. Real sharp and moving, yeah. slipping and throwing shots. And you'll see two lads throwing some shots at each other that is real. Uh, enjoyable to watch and you'll, and you'll see yeah. the, the sport and not say professionalism but the skill yeah we'll get there mate Won't and the long. kissing <laughs> <laughs> well Kev thank you mate thank you, back you, you mate. Yeah, mate. Thank, thank you very much thank you very much everyone. nice one everyone thank you hi everyone so I'm with Kev Lane we're going to do a little interview in a minute so I'll introduce him properly then but we're going to have a little move around now and uh See what Kev's got. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> I'm with the bull. He throws me about the ring. The ring's away, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice. See me keep shaking my leg because my bollocks are falling out of my boxer shorts. Ha <laughs> 